Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the posse of angels i'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice you can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819 hello everyone but before we get to those callers welcome once again to angel healing house radio now The Posse of Angels, my angelic family, wants to continue this month's theme of abundance in uh, in honor of tax time here in the States with a show that they've entitled, Change Your Work to Your Passion. Now, this topic for today's program came about because many people are waking up to the same realization their perception of their lives has dramatically and drastically changed in their ways of thinking about their work. And they've become clear as to where in their lives they've allowed themselves to compromise and settle for less in order for this to occur. Now, this realization has been the catalyst that has opened doors for many people to value themselves, respect and honor who they are when it comes to their jobs and their career. Now, as a result, many people have made positive changes as they have left dishonoring situations, jobs, and made forward movement to doing something that they absolutely love, something which allows them to have creative expression and something which then gives them with which then gives them great joy and a sense of purpose. What about you listeners? What if you never had to work another day in your life? And no, you wouldn't be winning lotto, but every night before going to bed, you'd be so excited about getting up the next day and doing what you absolutely love to do. In fact, You would never, ever again use the word work to describe what you do. And I know many of you might be thinking that this is just too good to be true. Well, that just about describes me to a T. Because ever since I connected with the wealth inside of myself, and I established my beloved, beautiful business, Angel Healing House. I cannot believe it. 16 years ago, you see, I adore what I do. 
I never refer to it as work. And I don't have to have days off from my business as I don't need or long for days off. This is because I get so energized and so darned excited by sharing my gift as a spiritual teacher, a healing practitioner, as an author, a writer, a speaker, a radio and TV host. After a lifetime of wondering what the heck I would do when I finally grew up, I discovered that who I am is in fact inextricably linked with what I love doing. As a result, ever since 2003, I have felt whole and complete by allowing myself this creative expression. It has been absolutely extraordinary how many clients of mine who have come to me who have been depressed and unfulfilled. And these clients all knew on some level what they loved doing, um, but they weren't doing it. And you know what? Many of them revealed to me as we went over their childhood that they loved doing these things that they longed for when they were children. You know, when I was a child, I used to get so excited. I got lost for hours and hours as I wrote and created the most wildly creative stories. My parents say that I lived in another world and I loved sharing my stories with others. Now, as I got older, instead of pursuing what I creatively loved to do, I listened to the very practical advice of others. You know, when I told my parents, and especially my high school career counselor, that I wanted to be a writer, they both laughed and said to me, how are you ever going to make any money doing that? What, do you want to be a starving writer? Disregarding what I wanted to do, they advised me to do something sensible with my life, like becoming a primary school teacher, a nurse, or a secretary. Now, those were really good jobs. So I went on to become a wonderful primary school teacher. I was also a, um, a depressed and anorexic primary school teacher, as I was living someone else's representation of what my life should look like. And I certainly wasn't living my own. Now, as I'd given up control of who I was, I sought to gain control over some portion of my life uh, through my food issues. I basically silenced the fullness, the wealth of my excitement within. And I was literally and figuratively starving without it, having dimmed my light. I then drew to myself a controlling, abusive marriage that continued to snuff the life out of me for 26 years. Now, to find out more about this harrowing part of my life and how I found my light again to create my now heaven-on-earth existence, you can purchase a copy of my amazing autobiography, which is I Am an Angelic Walk-In, the Autobiography of Angel Ariel. And this can be purchased at my website, angelhealinghouse.com or on Amazon. You know, once I started living my own life and once I started making my own empowered choices, amazing gifts and abilities started to be experienced. For the past 16 years, I have excitedly written books created presentations, seminars, radio programs. I've written articles for magazines, my own meditations, blogs, newsletters, you name it. And while you may not be a writer, each one of us is special. Each one of us is unique. But what we all have in common is that we know when we're not happy with certain aspects of our lives. What makes us stay in areas of our life that have ceased to become fulfilling and joyful? I believe it's the programming and the belief or fear that somehow we're not allowed to be, to have, or to do exactly what we want to do. The majority of times this is brought about 
because we are following what we were programmed to do. I experienced an example of this when a friend posted the following message for help on Facebook. She wrote, does anyone have any good ideas how to promote my workshops? I use Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, friends, emails, networking groups, but still am not getting the numbers that I need. Any ideas would be appreciated. You know, I smiled when I read this post as this was exactly what I would have done in the past. Just like this lovely friend, I regularly used all the networking sites and went to many networking groups. I followed all supposed tried and true ways that people have been able to increase their client, year, their client base in years gone by. But you know what, listeners, it finally dawned on me that with all the positive conscious choices that I've made in my life, I really am not the same person as I was before by making changes to become a very different person. I realized that the tried and true ways of yesteryear may no longer be tried and true anymore. This friend was faithfully following the old paradigm of how we've been taught and programmed to promote um, and run a business. But what she failed to take into account was that each and every one of us is awakening to a very different way of living. And in this golden age of enlightenment, we begin to understand that life is not about promoting ourselves. I get that. Life is not about promoting ourselves as the universe, God and the angels already know. They already know how spectacular how successful, abundant, and divine that each one of us is. Life in the new age is about allowing ourselves to be in joy and bliss as we passionately create, not for the money, not for the success. You're a success already because you're a divine reflection made in that reflection of God's source, but we create for creation's sake. This is a very different concept. And in many ways, it's more of a case of living joyfully rather than doing business, which when you break it apart, you could say it's just busyness. So, you know, by putting our emphasis on being happy and creating, we take our efforts off of trying to control the promotion of ourselves. And in this way, the universe is then given 100% free reign on bringing us the answers to our prayers and fulfilling the intentions in our heart to bring us just the right, the connections and opportunities in the best ways for us to serve then for our highest good. I love this quote. The Buddha became enlightened only after he had done all that he could do and had given up. When we give up our expectations and attachments as to the usual ways that business should or has to come to us, then God and the angels then have that complete freedom to send us people in the most limitless and sometimes convoluted of ways. I'll tell you a story. For instance, I've gained more clients by treating myself to something I love, to treating myself to a manicure and a pedicure instead of sitting in my office and wondering how the heck else to promote myself. This is absolutely true. Last time I treated myself, I sat down next to a pair of sisters getting their nails done for their sister's wedding. They both asked me for my brochure and they ended up booking sessions. And then each one referred their friends to me. It was like a vein to a gold mine had opened up. Now, why was this so? I believe that my vibrational frequency was so bright and joyful and high and positive in getting my nails done that the universe then equaled that brightness and joy and filled my previously set prayers and longings and intentions 
about being of best service in life. Remember, everyone, the universe does not work in straight lines, and it certainly does not work logically. The more we follow the barometer of joy in our hearts and uh, it and let go of the so-called prescribed ways of things working out for us, then God and the angels can work unrestricted. Again, limitless possibilities of magic and miracles occurring for us. The one thing that increased my business and the flow of abundance in my life and others' awareness, others awareness of me and my books and my services was allowing myself to have the F word. And that F word was fun. Because in this golden age of enlightenment, we fill our desires and intentions with our passionate creativity, fun, and our joy. You know, everyone, for the last 16 years, I have said a mantra to the universe that has helped me enormously. I've said, please, God, send me people that I can help. And please send people that can help me. And please, God, let me, let my eyes be open to receive the way that you want me to be of best service. For there is no greater bidding than to do your will. You know, many of us are at a stage uh, in uh, in our evolution, if you want to call it, in their ascension, in shifting in, in consciousness to realize that what we have done up until now is past its use by date. And we are going to be stepping in to something which uh, which is going to be presented to us which we might not even have considered before. The most important part of all of this is for you to surrender and for you to release all expectations and attachments and to open yourself to do the bidding of that higher service um, and just be open to whatever way that shows up in your life. You know, if you don't know what to do, in any given moment. Most of the times it's because it's not the right timing to make movement forward. And because we've been programmed to be human doings rather than human beings, we continually dictate and try to force and control the universe as to how and when things should happen for us when this is not in our control. Each and every one of us knows what truly makes us happy. It was fun and ignites our spark of creativity within. I think more than anything else, I do help people to proactively turn their lives around by helping them stop working so hard and encouraging them to do what they adore. Now, working hard and being diligent And loving what you do and working hard are two different energies. By helping others to imagine and visualize a fulfilling life outside of the current box that they find themselves in, they then open to perceive different opportunities manifesting in their lives. You know, the sad part of all of this is that most times that box that we find ourselves in that we may not like is a box of our own making. We are the ones who continue to keep ourselves captured inside by our limitations and by expecting um, uh, only limited things. And although I've helped many people with this same concern, there was one client that demonstrated to me the clearest correlation between well-being, wealth, and excitement. Let's call her Lauren. Lauren was a beautiful, creative, she was a highly intelligent young, young lady. She was also exhausted. <clears throat> she was depressed. She'd lost all motivation in her life. 
And as such, she had to quit studying after only one year at college. Now, during our session together, when I asked her, what did she love doing? Her face lit up as she told me of her love for fashion design. When we spoke about her childhood, she said that this childhood passion of hers followed her throughout her teens, and she sketched original designs. She sewed clothes for herself and for her friends. Um, She even sewed clothes for her dolls and for the big family cat. I would have loved to have seen those. This childhood passion followed her all throughout her life. And although it was blatantly clear how much joy she received from designing and sewing clothes, her father had other ideas as to Lauren's future career. Her father was a lawyer, and he had told Lauren that as soon as she received her law degree, that she would work at his law practice. Although she was truly not interested in the law, she really didn't want to disappoint her father, and she applied to law schools. Well, she told me that as soon as she began to get accepted by law schools, something happened. She started to feel ill. In fact, once she went to college, She was in and out of the infirmary more times than she could count. Completely exhausted towards the end of her first year, she was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. And when you break it down on a deep emotional level, chronic fatigue syndrome is tired of being sad, tired, and depressed. To help improve her immune system with Reiki treatments, she came to my healing practice. Now, I asked Lauren to close her eyes. And I said, Lauren, imagine that you have all the certifications in the world. You have all the money in the world and all the connections in the world. What would you be doing? And you know, everyone, without a moment of hesitation, She said, I would be designing clothes. She went on to tell me that she had a reoccurring dream that she was behind the scenes of a fashion show and that the people in her dream were speaking Italian. I told her that with each passing day that she was not fulfilling her desires so deep and longing in her heart, she was denying who she was and her body was reacting with despair, disappointment, illness, and exhaustion because of the sadness of her unfulfilled heart. I explained to her that if she started to make movement toward researching fashion design schools, that the universe would pick up her excited energies and send her opportunities and connections to help fulfill her excited intentions. You know, by the end of our session, Lauren's whole energetic demeanor had changed. She was sitting upright. She was animated. She was excited about stepping forth on the path to making her love of fashion designing a reality, even if it meant disappointing her father's dream for her. It was several years later that I received a letter and a photo of Lauren at a fashion show in Milan, Italy. She told me that when she decided to quit law and to enroll in a fashion design school, abracadabra, her symptoms of chronic fatigue, illness, magically disappeared. The simple reason for this was because Lauren was happy. She was fulfilled and joyous as she was living her own dream, not someone else's. When Lauren thought about designing fashion, in fact, she felt whole and complete. And as a result of that, she felt wealthy and prosperous. So listeners, take a moment in this theme month of abundance to reflect on what you are doing and possibly where you may have forgotten to employ fun, 
passion and creative expression, creating just for creation's sake into your life. Now, as I mentioned in the last couple of weeks, we are still experiencing a second full moon in Libra, which was last week on April the 19th. The previous full moon in Libra was on March 20th. And all of this is heralding a very lucky time for us. If you've been waiting and struggling the first half of 2019 uh, for something to happen, for some forward movement, this lucky time should see things turn around if, if we pay attention to the signs and if we act upon them. The full moon brings in new beginnings, new growth, and the perfect opportunity to can take troll, control and tap into your sense of power. The influence of this full moon brings us the energies of fertility, and it's about faith in the future and anticipation of abundance. So this is to the time of year to set new things into motion, make new commitments, and it's a time to find the courage and trust to take those first steps onto a new path for yourself. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. Remember that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Transformation Talk Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be taking some of your calls for those free angel readings. We'll see you after the break. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Take your own journey with the angels with Claire Candy Huff's Heaven Sent Guided Angel Meditation CD. Letting go of concerns and living in the now. This beautiful CD walks listeners through practical exercises to help free them from the burdens, worries, and concerns of daily life. Walking a quarter of the way across the bridge, you see a bright emerald green light and sense a loving presence. This is Archangel Raphael's green healing energies nourishing and revitalizing you take a moment now to bathe in this green healing light giving you much more than just relaxation and stress release this wonderfully narrated cd provides vivid visualization soothing and inspiring music and an angel's choir that will bring you peace clarity and a newfound awareness visit angelhealinghouse.com today Hello, everyone. You're back with me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. Before the break, I was speaking about the new moon, uh, sorry, the full moon in Libra, uh, that uh, we're still under its energies, um, and it, it happened last week on April the 19th. This is the second full moon in Libra, and it all has to do with our relationships. It all has to do with uh, not just with other people, but relationships with ourselves. Um, and I spoke about uh, this full moon heralding in forward movement for us, new beginnings. And while we sense the new on the horizon, I, um, I um, forgot to mention that it may cause us to experience a little bit more of a nervous need to take action and change things up. By not giving in to this, you might ab- absolutely feel like you're restless um, and have all this rest, restless energy within. But remember, if you're craving change or feeling unsettled, it just means that you've strayed from living in the present moment and bring being grateful for exactly what you've co-created and been blessed with. 
To help these feelings, you may want to balance this need for getting things done with allowing yourself to just go with the flow and then attend to whatever appears for you. You know, if you should find yourself with this restless energy, you may wish to put it to good use by cleaning your car, organizing your closets, cleaning up your computer, and unsubscribing from all of those sites that you that gave you discounts if you gave them your email address, which you never use. Then once those new beginnings and those new signs are then presented to us, then our desk drawers and our computer, along with all aspects of our lives, will be neat and tidy and in order to then easily and gracefully accommodate us moving forward once again when those new beginning signs manifest for us. Let's go to our callers. Our first caller is Karen in L.A. Hi, Karen. You're on the line with Claire Candy Hop. How are you? Hi. I'm fine. How are you? I'm very, very well. What's your question for today, Karen? Well, I've been dealing with insomnia for a few months Mm -hmm. and um, curious if you can see how to proceed or where that might be headed for me. I'm working with a specialist and trying to get off. I'm weaning off um, prescription medication. Mm, right. So, um, yeah, it's just, it derived from some anxiety in December, which I've been working through mm-hmm. and um, just, yeah, curious about the insomnia. Okay. There are several uh they're saying, <laughs> this is interesting, they're saying it's a, th- a three-punch deal for you. Um, one of the things um, is uh, the emotional attachment, as uh, which is still underlying. Um, and, you know, you may have thought that you've dealt with it, but there's this other, un, uh, this emotional attachment to what happened Um Uh, It could be uh, triggered by a past incarnation that you had with this person or with this event. um, And it's come back in in many ways to be resolved and for you to bring closure on it. Um, uh, It's um, uh, it this is causing it doesn't matter how much you've addressed it. um, You it still needs to have unconditional love and forgiveness around it. So there are, uh, there are certain exercises that I, I do with my clients during, um, during sessions um, to get down really deep and to finally have closure on that. So that's number one, causing this un, un, underlying unsettledness. They brought up CalMag zinc, uh, calcium and magnesium. Um, a lot of people take these. I don't know if you're taking them now, but certainly um, yeah. taking them right before you go to sleep. Um, uh, okay. a, a friend suggested to me, um, uh, this is not instead of, because uh, I don't advise and consult. Uh, this is not instead of any prescription medication. Only you and your doctor know how to tackle that. Uh, but um, a friend suggested, it to me magnesium oil spray and um, mm. just a couple of pumps in, in water and it gets absorbed so quickly and what I've noticed Karen is my sleep is more deep um, I'm a Libran I'm, yeah. constant, I'm constantly thinking I overanalyze everything I try to figure things out and when, I'm, and when I go to sleep that's the time that my mind takes over so um, what I've noticed okay. in taking this, this magnesium oil spray Um, It gets absorbed straight away. And I don't know if it will work for you, but that's a thing that they're bringing up is the calcium and the magnesium before you go to sleep. Uh, The third part, um, and I just lost it, was the underlying emotional uh, things um, that need to be brought Mm -hmm. into alignment. The CalMag zinc Mm -hmm. and the the third. Oh, oh, the third thing is stop being so hard on yourself because you are part of an awakened conscious collective and we so much of what we're going through um and our sleep patterns 
have changed irrevocably because of the energies on the planet. And the more we shift in energy, and if you are speaking to Claire Candy Hoff, walk in Angel Ariel, which you are, you found your way here, that you're energetically of a higher frequency and you are prone to being affected by the solar flares, energy shifts on the planet, um, you know, the planetary, you know, lineup and all of those things. So they're saying that part of it's in in energy energetic um and to cut yourself to cut yourself some slack but the first part Mm -hmm. is to bring whatever happened into emotional alignment um through unconditional love and forgiveness okay Okay, so that yeah and and then i was wondering sorry i was wondering if i'm drawing anything to me i was rear-ended two days ago and i just I felt like that got me more tensed up. I've been seeing a chiropractor for it, but mm. I was wondering if I like drew that in. Absolutely. Nothing too. happens by random. And um, I've spoken about on my program many times, the bank of the universe, the bank of the universe is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week at, at infinitum. And every time you have thought something that was negative, spoken something that was negative, no matter how much you justified it or felt something negative in your heart, then that negative unit goes into the bank of the universe. And then there's always a receptionist there that says, thank you for that negative unit. And the more you put negative units in the bank, uh, or you can even put positive, whatever whatever positive or negative deposits you put in, the bank must pay you dividends. So when you... Mm. Uh, drop the iron on your foot when you have an altercation with your boss, when, when you know, you're the only one that has a, a, a spat with a person in a, in a parking garage or, or you're the only one on the 405 that gets rammed up the behind and you're saying, but I wasn't doing anything. If this yeah. happens, then it's a dividend playing. And once you understand this, then you will be very conscious of the things that you think you speak, and you feel in your heart. Okay. And I do believe a lot of this is attached to the feelings that you have, the feelings of blame, being a victim, fault finding, or judgment, or anger, sadness, bitterness, resentment, regret, whatever criticism that happened, not only around this time because uh, in December, because I think this is a karmic thing as well, but it's, it's there for you to relive it, for you to finally have closure on it. So be aware of the things that you think, that you speak, and you feel in your heart. Let's uh, only a, about uh, a minute more with you, Karen. Okay. Let me Understood. go to the cards. The first card that comes out for you. Oh, that's okay. The first card that comes out for you is the Ace of Wands. This is a brand new beginning. Just knowing this today. And getting this message from the positive angels and myself, this will help you enormously. You don't have to rationalize. You don't have to justify. You don't have to figure out what's happened to you. You have to bless it because you co-created it. I, um, for some reason, even if you can't figure it out, it's not yours to figure out. It's for your soul's growth. And knowing this is going to create a new beginning in your life. And be like the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands comes out for you next. She's self-assured. She doesn't let others rule and, uh, and drive the helm of her ship. She creates and okay. manifests her own reality. And the next card for you is the, uh, the King of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles is that card that uh, is full of abundance and richness and wealth because of, because of who you are. Okay. So um, I hope that's been helpful for you. Oh, yes. Sounds like good things are on their way. They are. They are. Just change change your ways of thinking, what you say. Be very conscious of that. And uh, and then then you'll start creating a very different reality for yourself. God bless you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have Sarah. Um, Sarah, you're on the line with yeah. Claire Candy Hop. How are you? 
Hi, I'm well, thanks. Good. I'm glad. What's happening in your world? <laughs> um, okay. Well, so I am a, a single mom and have been focusing on my child um, for the last seven years. Um, and, I mean, I guess my question is about love. I mean, I I, I want to find like a, a wonderful lasting uh, partnership. And I, I wonder if I'm doing what I need to be doing to be open to love. Often it seems like I need to be putting my career first. So yeah, my question is, <laughs> am I doing what I need to be doing or is it, is it not time really to be focusing on my, my love life? The greatest, the the posse of angels is saying the greatest thing that you can do. It's not an either or situation. They're saying once Mm -hmm. you start, once you start to delineate and to try to separate, um, then, um, then it's like separating your energies. You weaken your energies. Um, the thing that, uh, that, uh, they want you to do is to focus on nurturing and nourishing yourself. Not to the detriment mm-hmm. of not not of, of not giving to your child, but they want to see yourself. They said you've done a what? How old is your child? Uh, six. Okay. They said you've done a wonderful job. Uh, such a such a loving, caring, kind, compassionate, considerate mother. And not that you're going to stop mothering, but they want you now to uh, make more of a concerted effort or take more time, which I know is very hard to find as you're a devoted mom, to nurture and nourish uh, your own soul. You know, mm-hmm. say, I am, I am worthy and deserving of love and then do things that create this love inside of you for yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. there is no love outside that is going to be any more, uh, extraordinary than the love we have for the divine inside of ourselves. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, love the little child inside of you. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're saying, yes, you know, think of the fun that you have with your child and then, then translate that to honoring and valuing that little child inside of you that also needs nurturing and nurturing. Another thing that you can do is something which I've done with uh, with my clients for the past 16 years is, uh, is saying, you know, thank you. Thank you for my love because the angels know you better, Sarah, than you know yourself. They, Mm -hmm. they know, they know what kind of, uh, love you want. They know their characteristics. They, they know all of this. So we don't have to keep pleading mm-hmm. and begging. So, and every mm-hmm. time we ask for something, because there's no time across the veil, it appears immediately in heaven. So all you need to do is say, thank you. Thank you for my beloved. And, um, and then you start living as though he or or she <laughs> they are yeah. part they are part of your world already now when mm-hmm. i did when i did this uh when in my book i am an angelic walk in the autobiography of angel ariel when i mm-hmm. did this i wrote a decree i wrote a decree that said thank you for my twin flame relationship um i knew psychically that he was my twin flame but that your twin flame might not be on the earth plane with you. You could say, thank you for my beloved, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then go on to write the characteristics, you know, it's kind, he's trustworthy, he's sweet, he's, you know, treats me like a princess. We travel the world together, mm-hmm. we work together. That that was mine. Nothing is more important than the, the, relation, than the relationship. Uh, we allow each other to be ourselves. So I wrote this decree. I slept with it under my pillow. This is, this is, this is absolutely 100% true. I slept with it under my pillow. Every morning, I ritualistically went down to the water. We will, I was living across from the ocean, um, and this, on the Gold Coast in Surface Paradise, Australia. 
And I would send the words out across the water, um, just out into the ethers, you know. And then at night, I would Mm -hmm. do the same ritual. And then within six weeks, that essence of my beloved twin flame, my husband, Pete, he was there with me. And I would do things like when I was watching TV, I would eat popcorn and I would feed him popcorn. He was there in the etheric, but I had not... It was not the divine timing for him to appear in the physical. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to cover Mm -hmm. him, cover him at night with the bed covers and give him a kiss. Um, And Mm -hmm. and and it was I I wrote that decree in March, and in September, six months later, at a Come as Your Favorite Rock Star party, I went as Stevie Nicks. He went as Elvis, and five days later, he asked to marry me. (laughs) He was. (laughs) <laughs> this absolutely, that's absolutely true. Wow, he was everything amazing. that was on this list. You know why? Yeah. You know why? The reason was why? is because I knew in my heart that this I did that this was my this was my focus. I didn't want to spend one more minute on the earth plane without him by my side. And I made that my only focus. That was my focus. And anybody, mm. anybody can do this. Um, so that so they're saying that start to see yourself as coupled already. Start feeling, and because it's the feeling that brings things in, it's the joy of you being together. You know, I used to. Um, uh, I used to visualize us walking hand in hand in front of our of in front of our beach home. I didn't have the money to buy a beach home, and you know, mm-hmm. rolling around in the surf like from here to eternity, kissing each other. And then, <laughs> and then when he asked me to marry him, it turns out that he had a beach home, mm. and I moved into his beach home, nice. and it was. Nice, yeah, nice. But the <laughs> fact that the whole the whole point of all of this is that everything is energy, and it's the feeling behind yeah. it. Let's go to the cards and see what comes out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, can I ask another question, or I can uh, quick quickly? I, so, well, I'm just wondering if I've met this person yet. If you have, are your angels in contact with my angels? How does that work? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. there's a, there's a, uh, with my callers, there's a crossover that occurs and they have this, you know, they're, ch- they're showing me the tin cans with the, the line going across it, that they're talking with your angels as well. Uh, no, you haven't met this person yet. Oh, I haven't met? No, they're said they're quite adamant okay. about that. And, uh, there's, okay. they, t- they told me to pull one card for you. And this is the ace okay. of cup. This is the ace of cup. This is the beginning oh. of emotional fulfillment. This is a beautiful card, Karen. Um, I'm sorry, um, Sarah. So, um, so they're saying that that love and the fulfillment of that love is on the way. If you, re- if you re-listen to their message and you make that your energetic focus, then because of the laws of cause and effect when it comes to energy, energy out, energy back in. Nourish and nurture mm-hmm. the little child inside of you. Love her like you've never loved her before. And then, mm-hmm. and then send that out across the waters, the ethers, that this love is already yours and you will be amazed. And when your love comes in, you make a promise to myself and the posse of angels that you will call, mm-hmm. call up and tell us about mm-hmm. this love that came in for you. <laughs> I will. Okay. Take Thank care, you. sweetheart. Thank you so Bye-bye. much. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have another Karen. Uh, Karen from California. This Karen. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Good. What is your question? My question is, um, I don't know if you could answer this question, but uh, my question is, uh, is it... Um, is it time to let a relationship go or should I continue to shift and, you know, hope 
he shifts too. Okay. The first thing that they're saying is we cannot control anybody else. Right. Okay. So he may never shift. That's, that's, mm-hmm. his, free, that's his free will. The only thing that you can do is decide that um, – and they, and they never, the, the posse of angels have, have never in the 16 years since I incarnated um, as Angel Ariel has never told anybody to leave a relationship. But what they're saying is, ask yourself, are you being valued? Are you being respected? Are you being honored? If you feel like this is a compromise for you, that you're settling for less and that you have to change anything about you and compromise, then they would say to rethink this relationship. Because in this, in this higher dimension, in this higher frequency, we can do, we can be, and we can have whatever we want. And why would you choose settling for less and a compromise when you don't have to? That's how powerful and multidimensional that we are. If I were to leave, is there a twin flame out there, which I thought he was something that special, but so is there something more special? Well, soulmates soulmates are very special as well. They're saying, please do not get caught up on any labels, twin flames, soulmates, or whatever. All you can do, because your twin flame may not be on the earth plane with you right now. They are saying that they won't answer that because they want you to put your emphasis on honoring, respecting, valuing who you are, and, um, uh, and not compromising. And if those things come into it, then rethink. Because, uh, you know, uh, by, by holding on to something that's a compromise, then it affects all other areas in your life will then be compromised. Let's go I to the cards. I feel that I kind of am com- compromising. And that's I know. That's why, they're bringing, that's why they're bringing it up. And, and they're it's really saying that I'm gonna have to let this go. Well, uh, they're not saying that it's easy. They're not saying that it's easy, and they're not saying that you know it's just a walk in the park. But they're saying for your soul's growth and for honoring. Once we honor ourselves, especially in these energies, then honor comes into our work, our relationships, our health. The first card you get is the Eight of Wands. This is the opening. So they're, they're saying that the more you honor yourself, the more you respect them. Don't compromise. Be gentle with yourself. There are the deer in, in this card. And the deer is a sign of, of being gentle with ourselves and being honest and gentle. But then the opening occurs. You don't hang on to somebody who is a compromise because you think that something not, uh, is not coming along. Uh, when our hand is full, and God and the angels want to give us the fulfillment of our wishes and our prayers. They can't fill it up until we let go of what we, what may not be, comp- what, what may be compromising ourselves. The next card for you is the Ace of Pentacles. This is the wealth and the rich, richness of who you are inside. And then the next card that comes in is, is pretty much confirmation about then opening yourself up for a more honoring relationship, which is the chariot, which is about fast action and recognition coming in. So I've, I've got to go now to my next caller. I hope that's been helpful for you, Karen. Yes, it really has. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. God bless. God bless you. Take, Take care. care. Bye-bye. And let's go to our next caller. We have Luba on the line. Luba from L.A. How are you? Luba, are you there? Yes. Hi. Hi, Luba. How are you? I'm great. Good. How what is you your doing? question today? Okay. Um, it's not my question. It's my mom's question. I'm going to be translating for her. Okay. Um, so she came to the United States. Yep. And she's supposed to come here with her husband. Uh, and she was waiting for her husband here, and her husband died. That was my stepdad. And he okay. died suddenly, like in sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, and now she's lost completely. Mm-hmm. And she, of course, imagined her life completely different, and now she's a little bit, not a little bit, but a lot in a, 
Almost everything kind of broke all her. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nice. Yeah, and now she doesn't even know if she should live here or she should come back. She doesn't know. Luba, she doesn't Luba, even know okay. Her life yes. Luba, I only have about two or, uh, two or three minutes to go before I have to uh, close my program. Okay. But the first thing that I want uh, want your mother to know is that mm-hmm. this was his time to go. We all... Uh, we all write into our contract, our human contract of life, when we need to exit. Mm-hmm. So, so he did. It's, it's not like he he um, he passed too early. But what I'm going to do, Luba, is I have your number. Um, yes. What what I'm going to do is because I have to end the show now. Um, the posse of angels are telling me to call you after the show so that I can give you a full uh, explanation of why uh, oh, your you. stepfather crossed over. And this, and this will help your mother uh, to, to give her some uh, comfort and healing. So um, if you hang Thank up you so now, then, then I will call you um, after the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Kendi. Bye-bye. And that just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you to all of my callers. And if you didn't get a chance to get on to Angel Healing House Radio with myself, please do try again next week. Uh, Next week we'll be speaking about um, a topic that lots of people have asked me about over the years, which is writing our soul contracts. I'll also be speaking about the uh, the um, prequel to I'm an Angelic Walk-In, which is my number one Amazon um, international best-selling book, which is One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness. So do remember that Angel Healing House airs every week um, at 9, at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Transformation Talk Radio. And everyone... Please do remember to fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. I'm wishing you love and angel blessings. And I'll speak with you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.